All right, guys, let's rock and roll. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode. Today, we are going to go find the Tofino bomber. The title's a bit misleading. It's not a lost bomber. People have found it before. I just thought the title seemed um, mysterious, and so that's why I used that title. Um, I just want to tell you a little information about this plane. It's very interesting. In 1941, uh, during World War II, there was an airfield that was established here in Tofino. And uh, four years later, in 1945, the month was February, uh, one night a bomber was going up in the sky on duty with 12 crew members on board. And uh, I think they were actually going up island. The, the plane malfunctioned and it started falling 300 feet, so, sorry, 300 meters per minute. And it crash landed just ahead of us, about a 40 minute walk into the woods. And what surprised me about reading this article is that all 12 crew members survived. Isn't that bizarre? I haven't seen the wreckage yet, but any plane crash you're lucky to be alive and walk away from, right? So there's a little history and let's enjoy this hike. There's, uh, there's just something about nature that's so refreshing. You know, just getting out, going for a walk, it seems like you do that, everything in your head kind of just sorts itself out. You know, if you're confused or frustrated or worried, or you've got a, a bunch of plans and you can't figure out what you're gonna, how to do them and, and, and stressing about that, just going for a walk in nature, it's kind of like, the way I explain it is, is uh, you know when you, you're doing a puzzle and you take the, the, all the puzzle pieces and you dump them on the table, they're all scattered around. Well, I feel like after you go for a walk, it's like completing the puzzle, like every little piece makes sense and it all fits where it's supposed to, right? Good little analogy this morning. What is this thing? Well, that's creepy. I read that this might have been a machine shop back in the day. <laughs> that just looks scary. Okay, let's go in. Let's go inside. The graffiti does not help. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Look at this. Oops. Just around the corner here. That swampy, that swampy stuff wasn't too bad. There's just that one part that I kept misplacing my step, and then I drop like two feet. My my uh, my socks are wet now, which is, sucks. But it's okay. I think I'm almost there. Where is this thing? Look at we found it. We found it. 
This is so amazing. Look at this. Look at that. Right into the side of a bank. Right, so let's go check it out. This is amazing. Just in the middle of the woods. No one around. So it's been here for years, it's been graffitied and, and um, people have come and take all of, of, of the expensive parts out of it, but it's still pretty intact and it's just an amazing sight to be seen. I'm really happy that I did this hike. So it came from basically where that plane is flying, you can just hear it, well I can hear it, and it came in. I, I, I just, it just blows my mind. Because they're on a hill, like they, they kind of nosedived into a hill and it blows my mind that all 12 survived. When it crashed, there was a big fire because it was hauling a bunch of fuel. Where is it? Where's that plane? It was hauling a bunch of fuel and the fuel lit on fire and uh, so there's a big fire here. And I think that all 12 of them were trapped inside and they, they, um, they had parachutes on board and so they kind of blocked the fire off with parachutes um, until, until they were rescued, until help arrived. Unbelievable. And then like I showed you, or maybe I haven't already, but I'll go show you this little pond. They were also carrying uh, uh, some type of explosives, 41 kilograms of explosives. This right here, this is where they detonated all of the charges because they thought, you know, yeah, we can bring them out, but it's quite a hike through this awful terrain. So let's just detonate them. That's where the army uh, blew them up. And so that's what created this pond. Cool, hey? Eh? So yeah, if you wanna learn more about this, just type in Tofino, Tofino Bomber, and you'll be able to see all the history and, and uh, what this plane looked like. I just, I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine what they were thinking. You know, coming down, I couldn't imagine that moment of, like they would have just been right here, flying in, getting real close to the trees, and then that's all they're seeing. <sighs> scary, scary. Oh, how am I gonna get out of here? This is the toughest part. I made it back to the highway. It wasn't too bad at all. It was probably an hour hike in, an hour hike out. Where you really slow down is in that swampy, that swampy stuff. You know, you just kinda, you're at turtle speed through that swampy stuff. Should I start hitchhiking? Oh no, <laughs> I don't want someone to pick me up. was fun, wasn't it? Woo! Nice little hike. Beautiful little hike. All right, guys. If you ever want to do this hike, I'll quickly, exp I'm gonna put it in the description below, uh, the exact website where you get all the directions, but I'll just explain real quick. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come into Tofino. Uh, there's that one single highway, the Pacific Rim Highway that's straight ahead of us. So this direction, that direction is north, that direction is south. So this is Radar Hill, 
uh, turn off. You're gonna park back where I just took off from there. You're gonna walk up to uh, this intersection here. You're gonna turn right and go south. And then what you're gonna do, starting with that telephone pole, you're gonna start counting telephone poles. And, uh, and on the 15th telephone pole, there's a trail off to your right hand side and that's the trail that you're gonna take. There's the turn on, there's the trail right there. Right there. I think I'm gonna wrap the video up here, guys. I hope that you enjoyed the uh, enjoyed the video. I hope that you're, you you keep living that dream as always. And uh, I am headed to I don't know destination unknown, which is an awesome feeling. So thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Till next time. Bye bye. All right. So as promised, I'm gonna add a bonus feature at the end of every video. So I've got the question about, well I've got the question about laundry, which I do at a laundry mat, which I'm doing right now, but I also get the question, uh, what about Wi-Fi? What do you do for Wi-Fi? And I'll show you right now. So right now I'm editing the vid video, so this is on Final Cut Pro. You know, here's me. It wasn't too bad. Da, 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 da. There's just that one part. And I actually don't need Wi-Fi to edit the video. So I can take my SIM card out of my camera, plug it into my computer and start editing. I don't need Wi-Fi for that transfer, but I do need Wi-Fi for uploading. So once I get this video all finished, then I'll go to upload it. And that's when I usually go to a coffee shop or I think tonight I'm gonna to go to a nice fancy restaurant because I'm just feeling like it. But um, um, because I don't like draining battery from my camper, I just use electricity when I find it. So. I'm just standing here editing my footage and then I've got, a, I've got my computer hooked up and I'm also charging my, uh, my camera battery. You have to be resourceful when you're in the RV lifestyle. So we're gonna finish moving that to a dryer and then I'll show you what I do for editing. Sometimes I look funny because I go into these fancy restaurants and I'll only order like a beer and I'll get my laptop out, my camera out, all my bags, and I'll start writing a, a, a video for tomorrow. And people are like kind of looking at me, right? They're dressed all nice in this fancy restaurant. So I'll show you that in just a second. Actually, you know what? It's not just a second for you. It's right 